climate extremes. Uh, in the last two weeks, particularly in the Northern Hemisphere, there has been unprecedented extreme events. There have been major floods across every continent. Uh, and when I say major floods, I don't just mean water on the ground. We have lost villages, towns, great chunks of cities in the Northern Hemisphere in the last two weeks. It is now here, and we have to appreciate that. Although we have had some events in New Zealand, it is just the beginning. So, don't want to scare monkey. <laughs> uh, but we have to get with reality, and that way we can make really great decisions. This, there's th two other areas that I just want to set as context. One is our disappearing ecosystems in New Zealand. We have really retained this myth that we are doing well on the green front. In no shape are we doing well on the green front. If, you, if you've known me, I've been sharing these, this little graph uh, around a bit. It's something every New Zealander needs to have in their head. This is our picture of biodiversity in New Zealand. The blue bits, the, the greeny blue bits, uh, we're not doing too badly. They're the ones that are not threatened. These are all of our native species in New Zealand that we know of. So we have a lot of data. We don't actually know all of our native species in New Zealand. We're short on data. The grey bits are the short on data. The bits on the left that are the dark red and the red are threatened or at risk of extinction. In New Zealand right now, our ecosystems are disappearing. Our native ecosystems are disappearing. This is a fundamental platform for which we exist as humans that every living thing in New, in New Zealand rests on, these ecosystems. And as you can see, some of them are not particularly great. There's a lot of red on there. But I've circled some of the particular worrying ones. Marine invertebrates. So when you're talking about uh, ecosystems, it's best not to look at the big things. The big things go last. We need to look at the little things. We need to look at the soil. We need to look at the small invertebrates and see how they're doing. They're not doing well. So our marine invertebrates are the 412, you can see. Most of them are on their way out if we don't have any interventions. Our seabirds, particularly concerning. There's a load of reasons about this. So there's not one, I'd love to say, it's because of this, go solve it. It's not like that. There's a whole bunch of complex reasons for this. I'll go into that in a tick. Uh, and at the bottom, the bit that we don't really talk about uh, is the terrestrial invertebrates, 3,721 of those, and a good chunk, if not half, if we had all the data, are threatened or at risk of extinction. And then our vascular plants, so the plants that we know of, trees, the green stuff, uh, we're almost at half of those, also at risk or threatened with extinction. So our picture, our Instagram picture of the forest doesn't really tell us the full story anymore. Our forests are quieter. And anyone that's tramped will know that. Uh, anyone that's going up into the backcountry, up into Arthur's Pass and those areas will notice the quietness. I certainly did after being 20 years away. If you're driving home at night, you'll notice maybe, uh, this is showing my age a little bit, but 20 years ago, my window shields at night are covered in insects on the way home. You had to clean, and this is definitely showing my age, uh, you had to clean the grill <laughs> uh, uh, because there were so many moths and insects and small invertebrates. Uh, now I, I take the same, amazingly, I take the same route home uh, after all that time, and I have maybe one, maybe two, not hundreds or thousands, just one or two on my windscreen. So the other part that we need to be aware of as Kiwis, because sometimes we, uh, we think that, oh, we're doing all right. You know, there's only a small number of us. But actually, this infographic tells you 
we're kind of like the spoiled teenagers of the world. This shows you the overshoot days. The overshoot days tell you that uh, how many resources you're using in a year that can't be regenerated. So for New Zealand, our day is April 19th. So by the time we get to April 19th, everything after that, we're going into debt to the earth. So we've used up by that date, everything that we're, regu we're regenerating. After that date, we're now going into debt. Now the earth isn't like a bank, it doesn't just uh, keep handing out money forever. The earth is starting to deplete. So as role models to the world, we are not good. The only consolation is maybe Australia is even uh, is in March. <laughs> uh, but interestingly, we're the same day as Russia. There are lots of countries on this that don't ha they aren't on this map because they underuse the resources in a year. So they help balance us out. So we're lucky. Some countries are helping us to uh, balance out a little bit, but not enough, and not the biggest consuming countries in the world. We have this major disconnect as humans, and we're becoming more robotic in our thinking. And this is something that with Terra Nova we're constantly looking at. If we're not connected to the earth under our feet, it's very hard to make good decisions. So in saying that, we're not looking at just moving around the edges. We're not looking at just trying to do the little shifts in our home or in our business, recycling. I can't remember the uh, statistics, but uh, it's really high. 90%, I think, of New Zealanders think that recycling is going to be a major contributor to the climate change problem. Recycling is definitely not the main issue, as Rod pointed out. We need major shifts in the way that we look at the world. Everybody in this room is here because we believe in the potential for you to lead those shifts. So, what shifts? We need to stop thinking and referencing environment as if it's something over there. And we need to now look at it as Earth. Every single one of us in the room has a responsibility for this Earth. If you are living on this planet, you have a responsibility for this Earth. It's not my job as an environment person or that organization over there or someone else or someone else. Every single one of us has to go, right, I live here. I have a responsibility to look after our Earth. We have to get away from referencing ourselves as separate from this planet, like that we are the most important thing on it. We are not. We are going to be very humbled by the fact that we are not very shortly uh, when the earth starts to kick into gear from the damage we have done. We need to see ourselves as totally integrated. Everything that happens to us is happening alongside us with the earth. We are it. It's interchangeable. Our our connection with our earth is going to be reflective in everything we do. If we are disconnected, there's a problem. We need to stop talking about climate change as the problem. It is not. Human behaviour change is the thing that we have to shift to and start looking at. It is not an environmental issue. It is a social human behaviour issue. We need to stop extracting and go towards regenerative. And I've deliberately taken out the word sustainable because sustainable now is being used as a just a less bad extractive. It doesn't, that's not the actual definition of sustainable, of course, but that's what it started to be uh, defined by people. We need to move to regenerative where we give back more than what we use. We have to shift from environmentalists and activists to leaders and change makers. I was in a room in 2009 with the top environmentalists and activists in London before one of the COP meetings. In 2009, everybody in the room knew the statistics that Rod set out today. The, the agreement in that room was that if nothing was done, if so, if we're, we're okay, but if nothing's done in the next 10 years, we're done. That was in 2009. We knew the data then. We don't need more data to tell us. We don't need more environmentalists to wave the flag at us. We have to stop pushing over to them and start taking it as ours. 
We need to be the leaders and change makers with the earth under our feet. We need to stop talking about problem solving like it's singular. We have to look at the catalyst for change. We have to start looking at what we can do and how quickly we can do it. Now for the beautiful uh, future that we are going to, as leaders in this room, start to put in place. This little clip is from uh, regeneration.org. It's a beautiful website if you go on it. It has all the actions and a whole range of areas that we can take. We are not short of information on what we can do. The issue is, is that we need to know what the catalysts are, what is going to accelerate our issues, our good action in this region. It does look like Christchurch a little bit, though, doesn't it? And this is where I come to today with Go Waitaha. So this is the Terranova project that is looking at the Canterbury region as a geographical transformational area that is environment-led, that is earth-first across its economy, across its sectors, where everybody is leading the way and we become the region that leads the way with Earth First. It is our opportunity to make this country live up to its myth and to start generating an incredible economy that will be good for us. To the point that Rod was making earlier, we have the option now to be at the bottom of the pack and try and compete at the lowest, the, what was the Rod phrase you used? The, uh, the dirty, discount. D dirty discount. We're at that option. We can try and compete in the dirty discount economy or we can start to say we can do this. We can start to drive a regenerative economy where we start to lead the world on this stuff. We have all the ingredients. We just need the leadership and the drive and the willingness to do stuff quickly and not wait for another year of talking about it. 